My name's James. My name is Presley. And, and I'm Ian. Uh, you wait, settle should... down right now, guest. sir. You are the <laughs> guest. You wait to be introduced on today's episode of The Height, Height of, of Horror. Horror. Yeah, it's all being left in. Okay, guys. Oh, my God. Presley, Great. how are you today? And specifically I... just you. Not my husband is doing great. <laughs> uh, no, I'm good. I feel like I haven't seen your lovely face in like months. It was December 21st was our last record. That's almost a month. Uh-huh, uh-huh, because we had that nice little break. I needed it. We all needed it. Hearing my dumbass voice. That's what the listeners were saying. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing well. We should say, hey, if you're a new listener, thanks to everyone sharing it on Facebook, because our last episode got quite a bit of views. It was good. Oh, yay. Oh, hey, guess what? Our baby just woke up. Oh, so our guest isn't even going to be ever introduced. Yeah, but let's keep the introduction in. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, he's putting headphones back on. Onto the baby. Oh, heck yeah. The baby will be our guest. And then this is when the guest should improv as if he's a baby. Blah, 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 blah. Whoa, you heard it here first. Animal from Muppet Babies is our guest. How are you? Waka, waka, waka. Okay, now it's Fozzie Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Presley, should we introduce our guest? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Do you know him from his many plethora of things? Maybe Parents Under the Stairs, Horror Corridor, the individual doing visuals over on Horror Crunk Entertainment, which I am officially aboard as well now. Ooh. It's Ian Bracken. Saws up. Oh, we also, I guess, d Presley should have introduced him. I don't know. <laughs> you do it much better. I wouldn't have done any of that. Okay. Let, let's, let's get that microphone either centered in the middle of you guys or in a way that I'm it's, trying. I'm it's sorry. Let's some more of it. Yeah, there we go. There we there. go. I'm the guest. I don't need the full mic in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, for editing purposes, I'd love it if you both had a microphone, but hey, you, you can live with what you can live with. We figured since I'm probably not going to be on the whole show that mm -hmm. we just share. Hell yeah. So I'll just lean in when I need to talk, I guess. All right. How are you, Ian? Oh, I've been doing good. Uh, life's been really busy on my end, and I haven't been doing... As much Horror Corridors, I've been doing about two a month, and uh, yeah, I've been working along with Horror Crunk, uh, doing some behind-the-scenes shit there, but most of all, I've been taking care of this little guy. He's, uh, you know, Presley, the host, uh, your other host here, works nine hours a day at the coffee warehouse, so uh, yeah, I'm taking care of him, and then I try to let her have some uh, rest and relaxation when she gets home, so... That's another couple hours with him, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we're getting pretty acquainted with each other. Heck yeah. <laughs> so all I've been watching is like kids' movies and shit, and like Coco Melon, which is like a kids' show. And I uh, I managed to uh, watch a good chunk of The Ring, and it's been a while since I got to see it. Hell so, yeah! So uh, it was I'm very thankful for breaking me out of the the kids' show mold i've been in lately ooh, ooh, ooh. i was gonna say i'm about to be watching that velma that's a kid show but no that's specifically for adults are you guys excited or do you guys like scooby-doo um i like the i actually do like yes i do i am a fan now that i think about it there's a velma spinoff show coming in or something yeah hbo max it's for adults it's horror it's looks good what? the animation's quality Mindy Kaling is Velma. Wow. Wow, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, I think it, on the day we're recording this, that's when it premiered. I'll give it a chance for oh. sure. Hell yeah, guys. Well, do you want to get into our Fortnite of horror? Ooh. Yeah. Did you watch anything since we last spoke? Any horror movies? Yes and no. What does Basically. that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it means I bought two movies and I have um, ADD brain and I don't know. I started them and I never finished them, mm. but 
I started watching Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Hell yeah. Which is always just a fun time. And then I bought Psycho Goreman. <gasps> it's so and that good. That movie is so good oh, and yeah. hilarious and funny. I watched that with our 10-year-old Thomas, and he loved it. It left a really good impact on him. Hell yeah. That movie's great. We also, we rented Die Hard, too, remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I was so fucking stoned, though. I couldn't watch it the first time, so we had to shut it off, and I had to not do it. But, no, we finished it, like, the next day. I started over Christmas watching... Santa Claus is coming to town, the like claymation one. And I stopped watching. I was like, I'm too stoned to watch this. It's scary. (laughs) (laughs) Felt like a mushroom trip. Uh, It felt like an endless void, like a vacuum that I was in. And I'm like, I need out of this as quickly as possible. Yeah, that's how I felt with Die Hard. I think we got like 21 minutes in and I'm like, babe, I need we need to go for a walk. I'm violently stoned. Mm hmm. That's the kind of stone when you got to sort out your shit, you know, like there's like too much chaos going on in your brain. You're like, I need to do one remedial task and just set myself straight. Yeah, I don't get that stone, so I would not know. I made really potent butter, though, and it was um, it was a different kind of high. The last time I was that stoned was on a camping trip in high school, and I was so stoned that... When I went into a sleeping bag, I was like, it's like a caterpillar's eating me. <laughs> and all the the light, they had just one work light, like a, a whatever terrifier lit every single scene with, you know, those big workshop lights. And Yeah, that's what I used to light my shit with, my music videos and stuff. Oh, I bought that movie, too, and watched that in its entirety. Woo! Terrifier, too. Oh, Terrifier 2. I haven't seen it yet. I'm waiting for okay. to oh. hang out with Lil Corey and watch it. Tell him to hurry his ass up and come mm-hmm. and see mm-hmm. you so you can watch it. We were supposed to see it in theaters and every single date that I set, oh. he had to keep canceling. That hurts my heart for you. We saw it in theaters and it was a fucking phenomenal time. I should have just seen it by myself. Yeah. Or with Nicole. Uh, no, Nicole will not see it. Why not? The clown of it all. Okay, I figured. (laughs) (laughs) But she's down with the posse, right? Absolutely not. She hates insane clown posse. (laughs) She's not part of the fam? No, why would she be? Here's the things I watched during my Fortnite of horror. The first one was Christmas Bloody Christmas. Have you guys seen that yet? No, is that new? Yeah, it's on Shudder. If you don't like Rob Zombie movies because all it is is just people saying the F word as a verb, noun, adjective, adverb, etc., you're not going to like the dialogue in this movie. But boy, oh boy, is it beautiful. It is neon saturated, only lit with like actual like Christmas lights, neon lights. It looks amazing. Shot on 35 millimeter, I believe. It's fucking amazing looking. The script is a little long. Or you want to know what? The script's probably not long at all because, man, were they improv but only knew, hey, throwing an F-bomb. So visually get stoned, watch it. You'll have a great time. If you're not, you will not. Sounds kind of like Red Christmas a little bit. The aborted. The Australian abortion yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. It, they like lit with a lot of primary Christmas colors. So mm-hmm. it was like kind of had a Di- Dario Argento Christmas look to it, mm-hmm. sort of. Speaking of abortion movies, I watched The Evil Dead Trap 2, Hideki. Ooh. That was very good. I watched Hellbenders. Have you guys seen that? Yes. I've heard of that. Yeah. It's bonkers. I loved it. That's the comedy, right? Yep. About the priest mm-hmm. oh that's right that's yeah. the one you want me to watch yeah they gotta sin as much as possible so they can be <laughs> like as close to hell as possible so they can fight off demons it's that's great. cool yeah it's so good then i watched this is on shutter bloody muscle bodybuilder in hell it's a japanese movie and it's really just a near one for one remake on video of the evil dead but like a japanese crew doing it it was cool i would highly recommend it I'm going to sign off because of the baby, but uh, thanks for having me on. Hope- hopefully I'll be on soon. Back at you, sir. 
I guess we should have asked him, like, what would you give the ring? But he'll probably say five out of five. He's gone too far. <laughs> <You can't come laughs> <back. laughs> then one that Nicole was like, we got to watch it. The Killing Tree. It's on Tubi. It's child's play. But instead of going into a doll, he goes into a Christmas tree and he's just murdering people as a Christmas tree. It's redonky lips. We watched Mosquito, which is a, a perfect bee creature movie from the <laughs> 90s. It rips. Robot Ninja, The Blob, the remake. We finally watched that for the first time. And Nicole's like, why has no one ever told me to watch this? And I'm like, Nicole, I've said we should watch this multiple times. But hey. Like the 80s one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one's really good. Mm -hmm. I wanted to watch because I bought it. And it says the aspect ratio should be the widescreen aspect ratio. I bought Hard Boiled. It's not a horror movie. It's a John Woo movie. Insane, like, gun violence stuff. Like, really heavy, impractical gun effects. And I've been wanting to watch it for so long. Finally got a copy of it. I said, I'm going to take an edible and watch this tonight. Took the edible, put it in. And it's the goddamn, like, four by three widescreen. Meaning it's, like... If you were back in the 90s wanting to watch something on widescreen and you have a four by three like old television, they would yeah. make that widescreen. They would like present the widescreen and they have the bars on top. But if you watch it on a modern day television, it's in the center of it with on the top and the sides and the bottoms all blackness, which is not fun to watch. So I got to get it on Blu-ray. But I was like, well, I'm stoned now. What do I want to watch? I was looking for Christmas Hallmark movies. Nah, nah, nah. Then I was like, holy Christmas. Maybe Sharknado 3 because we've only watched the first two. We found Sharknado 3. You watched it. And it is a five out of five movie, guys. When did that one come out? I think 2015 probably. Ah. Uh. Got it. So we'll be watching the rest of them. Then I watch because in March we're doing nothing but trauma movies over on the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash MLM pod. I watch Beware Children at Play. That movie rips. And the final movie that I watched this week because I watched Ring this morning and I said, you want to know what? I'll make it a double feature. I watched the first sequel to Ring, which was Spiral. I watched that today and I was like, this is great. Why do people shit on it? Then I get to the last 20 minutes and I'm like, this is why people shit on it. Oh, how disappointing. Yeah, it's, I'm glad that they recorrected and said, we're going to forget about that sequel. We'll make another <laughs> sequel with the director of Ring. And then they did Ring Zero and baby, is that the fucking greatest movie ever? Nice. Nice, nice, nice. And now we're on the subject, Ring! Oh, hell yeah. Thoughts? Oh, it was so fucking good. I've never watched it before. Nicole and I, I think over the course of three days, maybe last year, 2021 or early 2022, I said, let's watch Ring. I'm in the mood. We watched that and I was like, oh my God. And then we watched you on it and I was like, oh, that one I think is much more scary. Nicole does not think so, but I do. And then... I'm like, let's watch the second one and let's watch the prequel, the third one. And they're all amazing. They, I think they just ring and ring two equally as good than ring zero uh, somehow better than the first. And then you have the American versions. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Rings? That movie was unwatchable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was so bad. Would you like to know the, all of the timelines of Ring movies and TV series because I wrote it all down. I would. Okay, back in 1995, we had Ring Kanzenban, which was a direct-to-video release that is its own thing. It does not have any further continuity. The book Ring that all of this is based off from was released in 1991, just like me, and... Eventually, four years later, this one comes out. You can only find, you know, VHS rips of it, I believe. So if you want to seek that out, it is to today the closest to the book adaptation that any movie has gotten. Then we have Ring. This is one continuity. You have Ring from 1998, Ring 2 from 99, then the prequel Ring Zero Birthday from 2000. Then finishing off with 2019 Sadako. 
Then another timeline is the ring from 1998 that we watch, followed by Spiral also in 1998 because Toho thought, wow, this book is so fucking popular. We can capitalize on this by releasing both movies at the same exact time. And boy, did they should not have done that. I did not even realize it was a book. So that's good to know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I think it had... There's the main trilogy and then two or three books that came out after the main trilogy and then a book of short stories that supplement in things, which is where uh, Ring Zero Birthday, a lot of that back lore and prequel stuff comes from that book. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you had Ring 98, then Spiral also in 98, then jumped to 2012's and 2013's Sadako 3D 1 and 2 respectively. Mm. Then completely unrelated to any movie continuity or concrete timeline, cinematic universe, if you will, are Sadako, Sadako, I should be saying, DX and Sadako versus Kayako, which is a Juan versus the ring type of deal. I kind of love that. I think it's still on Shudder. So if you got Shudder, check it out. We do. That's how we watched um, this one. Hell Ring. yeah, baby. So yeah, check out, if it's still on there, check out Sadako versus Kayako. Then there's also a trilogy of American remakes, which if you've seen the second one, that one was directed by Hideo Nakata. He came back from, you know, he directed the first one, the second one, and then came to America to direct the second Ring movie and people are like, oh, hell yeah, this will feel more like the Ring from Japan. And then it just completely didn't. Weird. They probably paid him a lot to make it not feel like. Maybe he was just like, hey, I'm here. I'm going to try something different. I don't know. I need to know what was going through his head when he <laughs> jumped on board. Yeah, I don't know. But we also have The Ring Virus, which is a film made in Korea to by the same production team and creatives from The Ring from 1998, but they made it a Korean version to specifically get around Korea or South Korea's ban on Japanese cultural imports, at least per IMDb trivia. I did see that in a, in a couple places, so there's probably weight to be held in that. So mm -hmm. if you're trying to get into these movies i would say ring ring two then the prequel ring zero birthday that's what you should go with skip spiral oh yeah don't don't watch spiral and then if you if you really want to get into stuff i think spiral after watching the first three it does fill in blanks that the second movie doesn't to the prequel like it shows you some prequel stuff that i'm like oh hell yeah i like that i saw that but boy oh boy because it goes into so the book is horror but then it goes into science fiction and the video is actually a virus that people contract so it's a whole government conspiracy sp like there's so many layers to the the six or seven books that it's like oh guys we we got to Calm down a little. So Hideo Nakata, I think, is the director's name. He specifically was like, I'm not doing this sci-fi stuff. And I think it was made better because of it. Hmm. Do you want to get into a little bit of trivia now that I just dumped a bunch of lore? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Released in Japan on January 31st, 1998, Ring is a revolutionary movie within the J-horror genre. Based on the 1991 novel of the same name by Koji Suzuki, Ring is the reason your pretentious horror nerd friend says they hate late 90s and early 2000s horror because it sent a wave of pale-skinned Gerber ghoulies rippling through the decade like a coin dropped in a sealed-off wishing well. At least, like, when people think of, oh, I hate early 2000s, they're saying, I hate, uh, because... American remakes of Japanese horror movies were so prevalent at that time, and they were all PG-13, so th this had such a huge effect, but when you 
kind of bastardize it, which you sent me a text after watching this, which was... Oh, I knew you were going to bring that up. I knew you were. (laughs) I don't even... Hang on. Let me see. I said the American film industry ruined it? Butchered this movie. Butchered was my word. Am I wrong, though? No, at least from what... I, I mean, I saw The Ring when I was... When it came out. Like when like tw- 2001, 2002. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was scary. But watching this, it's just stark difference in feel and coziness. Like the, the American Ring, I think, is just alarming and scary. But this I could rewatch and enjoy over and over again instead of just feeling dread. That's what I was thinking when I was watching it. I'm like, I'm probably going to watch this. At least a dozen times in my life. Hell yeah. But you know what? I can't be taken seriously because the whole time I was thinking of Scary Movie 3. The whole time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking of when I watched Juan the first time. Because I've never seen The Grudge, the American one. Oh, just oh. Scary Movie 3 and <laughs> the original. Oh, it's so good. They have like Pam Anderson and uh, Jenny McCarthy and like schoolgirl attire you mm-hmm. know just being stupid and they were talking about it so at the beginning of the movie that's all i was seeing but yeah no i'm a child i'm sorry <laughs> all right just a couple more things this was made for only 1.5 million dollars the movie was a smash hit raking in an estimated 19 million dollars at the box office worldwide and probably much more in retrospect in home movie releases in so many thumbs it raked in in an upward position you'd think the critics were hi- hitchhiking a ride back from the movie theater after they spent all their money rewatching Ring it was a critically acclaimed movie and uh, it made a lot of money. It absolutely should have. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Most of the film's shoestring budget being $1.5 million or be maybe I have $1.2 million. That would be crazy if all of that was provided. Maybe $1.2 million was provided by director Hideo Nakata himself. That's insane. Like he funded his own movie? Yeah, which means he oh. he raked in a shit ton of money because of this movie God then. Damn. The sound of the phone ringing was created by mixing the sounds of four different types of telephones as Nakata wanted a more uncommon and less, in quotes, Hollywood phone ring. And that's all I got for, for trivia. Cool. I truly think this is a a five out of five top tier movie. If you guys haven't watched this and you think it's like, oh, I watched the American one. I'm also not going to dog shit the American one that much. I think it was still a good movie, but I'm trying to think of like, oh, that one's popcorn, but this one's a steak. And I guess like, yeah, the the metaphor rings true in this case. Oh, like, no. That's weird you say that because I was thinking of that saying today, actually, like, why would you have hamburger when you could have steak? Mm -hmm. You know, have you heard that one? Yeah. Yeah. But not in regards to this movie. I was just um, reminiscing about. (laughs) About sayings. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) Uh, I do think uh, in my case, I'd have a hamburger over a steak any fucking day. It depends. You have to factor in who cooked it, where'd you get it, what kind of seasoning. I'm not using steak sauce, so it better be good. See? Okay. But with a hamburger, most of the time, it's going to be a hamburger and you're going to enjoy it. I know. We we barbecue at work usually every Friday. And 10 times out of 10, the guy that barbecues our food is just like the grill master. He's like your classic dad. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's really good at grilling. And really good at making you feel inadequate. Yes. Classic no, dad. He's an angel <laughs> on earth. <laughs> Not my dad, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was I was like, Presley, please don't say because he's not on Earth. I'm, I was going to be like, <laughs> you can't keep dropping these bombs on the show. Uh, 
No, he's fine. He's alive. He's not well because he has really bad diabetes, but okay. he's fine. Speaking of angels, I watched this movie called Angel in Training. Check it out, guys. Ew. Is that a Hallmark movie? It is, isn't it? No, I think it's a full moon feature, like when they were doing children's movies. So, like, 1999, it's about a child, her dad's a comic book artist, and her mom's dead, and then an angel comes to help her figure out life. I'd watch that. Hell yeah, dude. Those are the types of movies that I look for when I'm stoned. I'm like, I want more like this. Fuck. Speaking of stoned, I don't do weed very much, ever. I don't smoke grass. I don't do it. So I made, Ian's like, hey, can you make me some cannabis butter? And I was like, oh, fuck yeah, dude, for sure. And you're supposed to disperse, you're supposed to use a lot more butter than Mm -hmm. I did. So I used like two ounces of weed and like one cup of butter and I infused that. And when I tell you, I got aggressively high, but... My point is, I got way too high. I fell down a rabbit hole in my mind, and I was just jumping to different topics in my brain. And I was like, Ian, would it be a pain in the ass if I asked James to edit an episode we did? And he's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, when I said I went to work sick, I need that to be taken out because what if someone at work hears that? I was fucking dying about that. And oh, no. He had, to, he had to calm me down and just be like, chill the fuck out. You're fine. He, like, yeah, James would more than likely edit that out. But maybe rethink this when you are sober. Do not text him right now. Exactly. That exactly. He was just like, no, like that's a pain in the ass. Like you should just fucking calm down. So I did. Because chances are, knowing James, we're we're gonna. Hey, it'll it's eight p.m. to us, but he's probably just about to go to sleep. But he'll see that and be like, I gotta handle this right now, Nicole. I'm sorry. I gotta get out of bed. I gotta find it, Presley. I don't know. Like, didn't maybe she was listening to the episode? Who knows? But didn't give me timestamps, so I gotta find it. <laughs> it was so bad. I was like spiraling. Oh, like the sequel to today's movie. Oh yes. You ready for notes? Yep. A quick rundown, guys. Uh, there's a well. An adult, young adult woman, I believe, is how old she is. Her name's Sadako. You don't find that out till later on in the movie. But she has, this is something I don't think this movie dives into. She has a form of psychic ability that is called photographic printing or like psychotic photograph photography where pretty much she can burn images that she's thinking of into things which is how this movie is made it makes sense now because it's like oh she's dead these are the slices of consciousness that she is putting out into the world and are being burned into this tape that's just hanging out in this uh, just super cozy looking cabin so, like, that that's one thing you should know going into it. It is explained that it's not just supernatural. Like, how is she doing this? That is how she's doing it. Mm-hmm. Then we have main characters. Reiko, she's a reporter. We have Ryuji, which is her ex-husband and father of Yoichi, who is a tiny little boy. A scary, creepy little boy sometimes. We'll get into that more later. And they're trying to figure out why children, teenagers are saying they watched a video or their friends watched a video and now they're all dead. And that's it. That's the a quick synopsis of the show. And that's the movie. Thanks for listening. See you guys. Deuces. We start out with two teen girls. And they are talking, going back and forth about going to uh, this cabin. One of them didn't go. And they they are acting so naturally that it feels like you are in on a conversation you shouldn't be in on. Mm-hmm. It's so good right off the bat, man. But wh- can you hear my baby? Yeah, but I'll be able to edit it out. OK, I just know, like, 
I've heard him in some of our episodes and I'm sorry. Uh, only if like he screams while you are talking, then it'll come up. But if it's just like right now while I'm talking, I'd be able to just mute that. Okay, cool. I also gave you a like two th- like fingers going down. <laughs> uh, that is I'm taking the envelopes, the volume envelopes and bringing them down. So like visually <laughs> I see it on my screen of like, and then I take those two little brackets, bring them down. But to you, you're like, is James flashing gang signs <laughs> at my baby? I I am. Oh wait, no, my fingers don't work anymore. Okay. I used to smell blood with my fingers. Oh, you can still do it. Cool. Hardly. Used to and still can. Okay. These two who are, uh, they're talking about like, hey, these kids like watch this video and then like this girl is holding in laughter about to bust and she says, and then the kid freaking died, dude. It was so funny because it's like this, you should be more somber, but clearly she's joking with her friends as friends would do. Like once you get to that, like. Talking out a bit to a friend is so easy to do. But once you get to the ridiculous punchline of it, that's when you're going to start breaking. Mm-hmm. What were slumber parties like for you growing up? <gasps> um. Well, that's an um. I can I can edit out the um, but now I have to leave it in because Presley's like, oh, boy, as, as soon as I start talking, the kid screams. I know. Fuck. He was just... Uh- he was coming up in my grill trying to get in my bubble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, slumber parties were good. Um, shenanigans. Just your typical fucking little res kid parties. Hell yeah. What about you? Did you have sleepovers? Uh, yeah. And the biggest takeaway was my, my friend Dakota Rust, my best friend in middle school and in high school, two years into hanging out, he was like, yeah, man, I used to... I used to be able to stay up to like 4 a.m. every single night, then go to school, especially on weekends. But since hanging out with you, I used to make fun of you for just out of nowhere. We'd be playing video games at 10 p.m. hits and you stand up and say, well, time to go to bed. And then you just go to (laughs) bed and leave me. And why do you sleep on your couch, James? That's weird. You you have a bedroom. That I man, that's something I should go to therapy and discuss why I was sleeping on couches instead of my actual bed. Wowzers, yeah, man. Looking back at childhood, you really start seeing things like it, it, there's a reason that why you're fucked up, James. And then he was like, Yeah, now I go to sleep at 10 p.m. because of you. Oh, <laughs> uh, speaking of therapy, no, during sleepovers, I would leave all of my friends downstairs and i'd go up to my dad's room because i had issues i had anxiety like really bad like if i wasn't with him i'm like he's gonna die Mm -hmm. he's absolutely gonna die so i would leave like four or five homies downstairs and i'd just go upstairs for the night was it because you had to like check his insulin oh no he was he was an He's an alcoholic. Okay, okay. I, I did. I, the only thing I know about him right now, before you said that, is he's got real bad diabetes because of the alcohol. So. All right. He should have been uh, doing vodka. That's non-sugary, right? Oh, you know, he did. He did all the. He did all the alcohols. Oh, he do like a suicide, but the alcohol version. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Gross. Yeah, I was about we, to say that'd be disgusting. We call those graveyards. Oh. Yeah, well, we did when we when we made them, but I haven't done that since I was like eight. Excuse me? Yeah, all the sodas. Oh, I thought we were still talking about the uh, I thought you were like, oh, we <laughs> called. Yeah, suicides are the ones with all the fl- the soda flavors. But for alcohol, it's graveyard. And you were like, since I was eight, I was like, Presley, I know you weren't eight years old downing all the alcohol in one shot. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I want oh. a real answer right now. <laughs> oh, my God. There are so many times on podcasts when I will ask a serious question to a friend and they will do a joke answer. Mainly Sean Marciniak does this. And I'm like, no, I'm like asking you a real thing. He was like, OK, fine. And then when I ask him like a thing to be goofy, he gives me a serious answer. I'm like, you are never on the same page as me, man. <laughs> Ah, oh, sleepovers, guys. Let us know what's a sleepover event like you. Let us know. 
I remember just so many, like, some birthday parties when no one would show up, you know? Oh, that's sad. Are you serious? Uh, just a few of them. Yes, Nicole. She's talked about it on other shows. Literally ever. There was one that she says that one friend showed up, and then that friend a little bit in, maybe like two hours in, I think it was, says, hey, I gotta go. I'm gonna go to the movies with my mom. <laughs> Instead of being like, hey, for your birthday, do you want to go to the movies? Uh, uh, your treat uh, or my treat, <laughs> not your treat. That would be even more <laughs> fucked up. Hey, yeah, let's you leave. You want to take me and my mom to <laughs> <laughs> For your birthday? <laughs> yeah, Nicole has much more sad stories, which you get brought up on, I think, Mostly Speaking Sentai of Nicole. We were talking about how Nicole's like, man. Finding friends who are women is hard for me. It's been hard since a child. I, I don't know why. Maybe they, I women don't like me. And I'm like, Nicole, literally every woman, all the women I podcast with all think whenever you're brought up, say, man, Nicole's a fucking shit. She's so cool. Totally. Yeah, because you have said that on this show. I would hype her up till the day I die. She's hella dope. Okay. I wrote down Sadako would strive in the LimeWire slash Torrent slash YouTube video eras of just mislabeled files where you go like, oh, I'm going to download Saw 2 bootleg. And then it's just a woman getting a head shoved in her vagina. And you're like, no, get it out of here. <laughs> she could just be like, oh, all these files are my fucked up ring video. And then everyone's infected. Mm -hmm. Well, she didn't realize that, though. Yeah, she's also probably because there wasn't like a computer on the premises of these cabins. It was only a VHS player. Yeah. Wait. OK, yeah. That would, that's weird. So that VHS was only there because that's where that chick was from. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Okay, got it. Like she could burn the image into that. And it's it's also kind of cool. You're like, oh, it's a rotating cast of people because it's pretty much a hotel. So people will get it seven days later. They die. So it's not really traceable back to this place if it's only happening here and there because not everyone's going to be like i want to watch a vhs and oh i see indiana jones all three of those i see die hard oh nope give me the unmarked one please exactly i will say the um american version did the faces a little scarier when they take the pictures no when they when they're found and they're all oh. contorted yeah, ugh, they're scary. way more fucked up. The second the spiral movie just does not do any of that. Even showing refilmed scenes from the first one, uh, there no one has funky faces. It's just they're dead. Weird. It's just, they're just like peacefully. <laughs> yeah, not even in anguish. They didn't even try. <laughs> <laughs> so. I see a lot of modern Japanese architecture mainly in haunted house ghost movies of this time, which gives me an unjust prejudice towards those types of architecture. Like if I went to Japan, I'd be like, everything's haunted. That house is haunted. That house is haunted. That house isn't. But I'm pretty sure there is an, a senile man who m milks his daughter in law in that one. But Ew. it's the same as like conjuring stuff. If I see a house that looks conjuring esque, I'm like, no, thank you. There was mm -hmm. our old apartment. The roof leaked just even when they in quotes fixed it, it would still leak in one specific spot. One time they just neglected it for so long that it caved in. But mm -hmm. we ended up becoming very friendly with the like main manager of our apartment management. And he once said, like, hey, I'll show you a bunch of apartments and we can move you in next month. Like, we'll break your lease and we'll get you in. It's fine. 
we see one and Nicole's like, I really like this one. Hell yeah. And I'm like, Nicole, this is a conjuring apartment. I do not want to be in here. Fuck this. I would like to leave right now just because it looked like the conjuring or like paranormal entity, things of that nature. And I'm like, this is scary. If I wanted to make a, a spooky movie, I would come here. But no, thank you. Smart. See, mostly everyone's like, mm, I just heard someone whisper behind my neck, but let's move in. Oh, no, truly, if if Nicole badgered me to rent an apartment and I was like, I think this is haunted and then it ends up becoming haunted, I wouldn't even need to tell her, told you so. She'd be like, I, she, I, she'd be like I'm sorry, James, I should have listened to you because both of us, I, I don't know. I want to see a ghost, but I also do not ever want to see a ghost. Nicole is like, I believe in them, but I never want to see them. Mm-hmm. My thoughts on moths. I fucking hate moths. Me too. They're gross. Ugh. What are your thoughts on the Mothman? Mothman, believe in them, but- I would shit myself. Oh yeah, me too. It's the same as Mothra. I'm glad Mothra dies at the end of every movie. <laughs> Mothra dies so hard when Mothra got their own trilogy. It was Mothra's son because Mothra was so <laughs> dead. So that like we find out that our main character, her niece is one of the one like the first one to die that we see on mm. film and they go to her funeral. But beforehand, this is hey Presley. This is to you as well. It's to all mothers out there. Never. Ask your son or just any child of yours to zip you up. No, it's gross. It's creepy. Don't do it. Ugh. More than anything, I was surprised that little kid knew how to fucking clip the dress and zip it. Because my 11-year-old wouldn't even be able to do that for me. Okay, see, I didn't even second guess that because... As someone who knows how to zip up a dress because his mom would be like, can you zip me up? Don't do it. <laughs> Don't. You got traumatized from that? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, now when I see it, it it's Norman Batesy. <laughs> yeah, I did. The, the most shocking thing was that this little boy, he was very, what's the word I'm looking for? Advanced, I guess. Mm hmm. Because he's like fucking five years old and he's like, she's like, I'm going to be late tonight. And he's like by himself the whole time. Well, that is just Japanese culture. I wasn't aware. I was not aware of that. There's a Netflix show that I forget the name of it right now, but it's a documentary, a reality show about like three to five year olds, I think, going around doing errands. That horrifies me. It's just the culture. You, they're more ad, or not more advanced that because adults generally have to work a little more than I, here, even though we do have to work a lot. There's a more self-reliance on children opposed to here where it's like, well, we we can't let them go a day without seeing mommy. That's cool. I want my kid to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's probably also some badness to it in the future. Like what? They can't. <laughs> I don't know. Like not feeling loved or there there might be negative side effects of that. Also negative side effects of being overloved, like or having no boundaries when it comes to love. And you're like, yeah. Wow. When I see anyone zip up a woman. Oh, no. Oh, I can cook meals by myself and <laughs> live independently. I mean, I can do that, but I, I, I think I got the worst of it because in teenage years, my dad and stepmom were completely gone most of the evening. They worked all day and then into the night, like at 11, because they had they owned like three businesses. But then as a child, I was zipping up my mom. Opposite ends of the spectrum there. Yeah, but, but <laughs> the worst of it all. Are you okay? <laughs> no, we shouldn't. That should be. There's what was the, the a child drew a picture in this that said, my mom is fat. <laughs> my dad is fat. <laughs> therefore, I am fat. And I wrote down, my mom has mental hangups. My dad has mental hangups. <laughs> therefore, I'm fucked. <laughs> and then that kid asks, like, do kids die, too? And that, like, the kid was creepy. He was. He reminded me of that little kid from The Grudge. 
Oh, ugh. Ugh. that movie's terrifying. I've only seen the remake. Uh, watch the Japanese one. It, I think it's frightening. Nicole doesn't find ghost children too scary, so. Oh, uh, Insidious? Are you fucking kidding me? When that little fucker comes out, like just strolls out in his wheelchair, that fucking ruined my life. I've never seen it. For fuck's sake, dude. Oh. Because I think I would find it too scary. I wanted to throw up. Like, she just opens the door. This little asshole just fucking wheels out. Maybe that's, um, I'm thinking of The Haunting of Hill House. But there's ghost kids in Insidious, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. You gotta watch that. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. No, she opens the door and they come running out like they're playing. And I'm like, fuck (gasps) you, because they're all gray and ghosty. (laughs) They're aliens. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, little gray aliens. Oh, dang. What if you saw a, like an alien dies here, like a gray, died on the land that your apartment was built on, and then you start seeing the spirit of that alien? Huh. I don't know. I think I'd probably throw myself off the roof of our apartment complex. I hate aliens, and I don't like ghosts. Like, aliens are the one thing I really, I can't watch, like, with horror, because it scares the shit out of me. Dude, we'll probably never do it, because I've talked at nauseam about it, and we did it on This Existed, but UFO Abduction, it was one of the first found footage movies. It was made in the 80s, and it is so well acted, so well produced, I think... It's maybe like 60 minutes long, and I think there's only three shots in it, but it is so fucked up because found footage hadn't been established as a genre, so there were none of those tropes. So when you're watching it, you're expecting something to happen, and nothing does. But then when something does happen, you're so thrown aback, you're like, oh, the aliens are here! I couldn't. I could never. It's the scariest movie I've ever seen. Fuck that. Oh, no, I w- I'd have a panic attack. I really can't. Oh, you, do not watch it then. I kind of want to now. <laughs> it's on Shutter, <laughs> so go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this real quick. The first time I ever watched it was MC Deep and I in our shitty trailer in Muskegon, Michigan, in the middle of summer at like 2 p.m. on a grainy ass YouTube video of it. This was before it was remastered and put out. And I was terrified to close my eyes i was like i don't want to live in this world because aliens might be here and they're going to kill us yeah no oh man i don't remember who says this line but they go i've never seen a corpse like that before and i'm like that feels like a lot like if you say it with that inflection beetlejuice could say that yeah (laughs) about a hottie who's dead People talk about how, oh, man, I like the Joker and Harley Quinn, people who just kind of see that from afar. They don't really dive into the lore. They're like, oh, I need to find my Mr. J or I need to find my Harley Quinn. And it's like, that's a really fucked up situation. And the same people do that or probably just haven't seen the cartoon in a long time. Rewatching the Beetlejuice cartoon is in hindsight now today because I bought it on DVD. It's rough because Beetlejuice is hundreds of years old and Lydia's a teenager and he is constantly trying to sleep with her. In the cartoon? Yeah, it's, I mean, not like fuck her, but like he's trying to smooch on her, snog if you will. Ugh. It's gross. Beetlejuice, get out of here, you're dead. Stay Someone has it. to me to him. <laughs> I had to look up because I read that the writer of the original book series also has a lot of very acclaimed books on parenting. And so many of his stuff is about children dying. And I was like, is he making just did one of his children die? Maybe those are the critically acclaimed parenting books of, hey, you're going through the unimaginable, as Hamilton would say. No, he he just has he's just like a good dad, I guess. Never lost a child. But hey, I got a vasectomy. I'll never I, I never have to worry about that. You did? What? You got a vasectomy? Wait, you don't know that, Presley? 
No. Yeah, I've been voluntarily infertile since, uh, I think, for seven years now. Wow, so you woke up one day and you were like, I'm getting snipped. Oh, I woke up many years ago in high school. I started asking adults I knew, teachers I knew who had vasectomies, and I'd be like, yeah, so like, what's the whole deal with it? And then they told me, and I was like, well, wait, so like nothing will come out? And they're like, no, you still, like, semen still comes out, just no sperm. And I'm like, okay, yeah, then I'm still cool with that. Wild. But huh. I'll never have to bury a child. They are reversible. Oh, no. Uh, one, never going to want that. And two, the <laughs> guy specifically, like, showed me how much he snipped of the vast deference on both sides. And it was, like, chunks. And he's like, this will make sure it never heals on its own. And two, it will be, it. yeah, it'll technically be easy to reverse if you want to shell out that much money to reverse it. Oh, God. Well, hey, that's cool. Mm-hmm. I'm child free since 2016, maybe? Oh, damn. Yeah. That's awesome. I heard the inkling Trump might be coming, and I said, who don't want to bring anyone into this world? Literally, when I had my kid in 2011, I felt so bad. Because, well, first of all, I was 16, so, you know, mm -hmm. that's one thing. And then I'm like, what kind of world am I bringing this kid into? And then he needed a friend, so then we had Jack. <laughs> <laughs> A creepy ghost lady gave you a premonition of things to come, and you're like, oh, no. Yeah, exactly. That's what Sadako does, guys. I wrote down, are all children creepy? Because over Christmas break, we went back home, and my nephew Brogan let that name sink in, guys. He, like, kept showing us things. He, was, he like, brought us into things and was like, look. Mommy's bed. Look, picture of Uncle Pat. And I'm like, yeah, no pictures of Uncle James anywhere. And then uh, it's like, <laughs> look, this. And then he goes into the bathroom and he says, he lifts up the toilet. I'm like, why are we in here? And he says, look, my pee pee. And then scurries out of the room and then goes to Nicole and he says, do you want to see the ghost that lives under my bed? And she's like, I absolutely hate not. It. I no. I hate that. No. <laughs> And then, like, I razzed her of, like, you, you, that could have been a really good bonding moment between aunt and nephew, and you pass that up. And she's like, if that's what it takes to bond with a nephew, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Fucking Brogan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, all children are creeps. These cabins are beautiful that they go to. I, I thought that same thing, too. And, like, the hospitality? Ugh. Mm-hmm. Like, when we went to Denver going through the mountains, there were cabins like this. I'm like, this is like the ring, baby. Oh, fuck. You should have went and you could have had your own seven days. Oh, man. That would have been dope. All of a sudden, you would have had to, like, come on for, like, episode two and be like, hey, guys, no more episodes. James got ringed. James fucking died. He had an open casket for some reason, and he had a <laughs> wonky ass face. They should have closed that. And I think James is going to be haunting his family because he specifically wanted to be cremated. He sent us all a link to this fucking videotape. Yeah, he sent us a, he put in his will to be posted on Rotten.com. <laughs> and you want to know what? They followed through with that. Not the <laughs> cremation. Maybe it was a conflict of interest of like, well, how can we get a picture of him all wonky faced if he's cremated? I didn't expect to be wonky faced, guys. <laughs> Did you have thoughts on the my mom's fat, my dad's fat? So I'm fat. I thought it was, um, I don't know that I reacted, but I was like, oh, that's random for a little kid to draw. Because they were just round little <laughs> circle bodies. <laughs> I'm already halfway through my notes. Hell yeah. I say an hour in. That's good, though. That's good. <laughs> that's a great time, usually. <laughs> So when someone brings up a bad luck situation, I'm going to just start saying, as I think Ryuji said, go to church and get an exorcism, okay? Like, mm -hmm. that's, if someone was like, man, my car broke down, 
my girlfriend left me, my cat pissed on my dockers, oh, I'm having a bad week. If I just said, eh, go to church and get an exorcism, actually, you want to know, that that actually falls in line of things I would say to my friends. You should start. Yeah. I'll probably start saying it to Sean and he'll get real pissed at me. <laughs> oh, man. So I should say Marshland Media officially endorses the Buffalo Bills as our NFL team because of Sean. If the Bills shit the bed, which I, hey, they're going to Super Bowl, they're winning. But if the Bull, if the Bills do shit the bed, I will say, hey, maybe insert head coach needs to go to church and get an exorcism. Why do you endorse them? No one else on Marshland Media likes football besides Sean, and he is from Buffalo and loves the oh. Bills. And I would always just razz the Bills and be like, they suck this and that. And then I realized, like, no, I shouldn't be doing that. I should, like, be enjoying the Bills with my friend. So I, like, bought a Bills hat. You can listen to the reve- reveal because it's very funny on <laughs> Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling last week. Mm, cool. While they're watching the movie in the editing bay at the the journalism place, the newspaper, the reporting headquarters, Ryuji says, wait, hold on, go back. This shot is weird. And I'm like, they're all weird. All the weird, all the shots are funky <laughs> by design. Yeah, that's the point. Which uh, in the book, the movie's like 37 minutes long. Oh, weird. So, like, I, if I'm like, this, this is fu- why does anyone watch this type of movie? I start seeking through things like that. I would have, if it was 37 minutes long, Sadako's not cursing me because I would not have watched the entire thing. Exactly. But in this, I read that most of the scenes were fi- filmed on 35 millimeter or whatever length it is. And then put into through a computer to digitally look grainy and then put onto a VHS to further grain it up. Their grandpa had a nice country house. It was fucking great. I was so confused because I went like I'm just ignorant, but I'm like, okay, I thought everyone like usually stayed in apartments. So I'm like, does having a house in Japan mean you're kind of wealthy or... It's probably a combo of the island you live on, you know, like if you're on a highly population dense island that isn't that large, you're probably going to be in apartments. But if you're on a more country island, you could have a house. It could be big and it also could be, hey, this man probably bought this house in the 50s and just like, you know boomers Mm. they're going to be able to buy a house real cheap it's huge and then still have it and now they bought it for thirty thousand, and it is worth three hundred thousand. yeah that makes sense so presley in this situation where you have seen four people die you've seen the video and you're starting to see visions When in this process do you start believing in this video, in this curse, and that it will eventually kill you? Um, As soon as my fucking phone rings right after I watch the video. Yeah, me too, me too. Yeah, I'm not. I've seen enough, like, scary movies. I'm going to message Ian and be like, hey, next time, like, Presley's watching a really fucked up horror movie, like a haunting one, give me her phone number and I'll call oh her. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll make sure he changes. Uh, he'll put me in your contacts and change the specific ring to this manipulated phone ring in this movie that was four of them mashed together. So then you'll be like, I'm getting ringed. You know, that would have been a really good thing, but you just told me the whole plot, so... I'll wait a year. (laughs) I'll do it on ring day, which is January 31st. At this point in the movie, we're full steam ahead, and 
our main character wakes up from a dream, then looks and she's like, where's my son? And then she goes out and he's watching the video. And this is why you should keep your cursed media safely out of the reach of children and locked in a secure box. OK, just like a gun because mm-hmm. it's going to kill your kid. I thought the noise, the sounds they did were really good because they got me a few times. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So props to that. This one, very low on one sound effects uh, or like creepy ambient sound effects opposed to, you know, like you hear the outside like Foley work is still there. But if you look at Spiral, the like first sequel to this, it's so much music, so many sound effects. But this, uh, it was just, you know, the the TV turning on. The telephone was creepy. And then when they go in the well, there was like demonic voice stuff going on. I watched it in headphones as well. Oh, fuck. Because I started watching while Nicole was still sleeping. So I put on headphones as to not wake her up. Frolic and brine, goblins be thine. That was just a poem from the movie. I didn't understand any of that. uh, Brine, I think, is of the sea. Oh, I think it just means, and maybe goblins mean you're dead. I Maybe they meant ghoulies. I don't know. Ghoulies 3. Hell yeah, it's the best movie, guys. Well, I'll just figure out what year that came out, and that's our next year. <laughs> and guess what? 13 episodes of ghoulies go to college. <laughs> we get Matthew Lillard on each one. Ugh. Excuse me? I don't know why I said that. I actually really like him. Okay, that's why I said, excuse me? <laughs> First, I find out you're you're doing graveyards at eight, and now you don't like Matthew <laughs> Lillard? <laughs> when they open up, so they open up that well. They go downstairs, destroy private property in this cozy-ass cabin. Raccoons are getting in there, little tanukis, little uh, uh, red pandas. They're finding their way now. And when th- there's this, slab on top sealing in this well it would have smelt like disgusting trash garbage when they pulled that open that's what i said i'm like a fucking deceased body fucking rotting away you're gonna have some like oh like you're gonna like not just that my nena has well water and when untreated it smells like eggs like just fart eggs So if you, it would be fart eggs plus a melted body. That's funny you say that because I had a friend who had well water and she smelled like farts all the time. She might have just been using that as a crutch. She might (laughs) have just been farting all the time. No, her water smelled like if you had a, I never drank their water because if you had a, if you just ran the water, it smelled like death. Oh yeah. It's well water, baby. Ugh. If she was farting all the time, I'd be like, uh, gimme, gimme. <laughs> Ew. Uh, the <laughs> smell of the water, the demonic noises in the well. Their big plan is like, hey, we're going to find Sadako in this well. I don't know what they were thinking. Maybe it's like, hey, we'll, we're, we'll be able to finally put her to rest. So they're like, well, the well, we got to empty it out somehow. Their big idea was let's get... Some ropes and two buckets. And th- we'll be able to do that by the my, our 7 p.m. cutoff. The time it would take to buy two buckets is the same amount of time to rent or buy a water pump and a hose to pump out the water. Yeah, that wasn't the most effective way. Mm-mm. Maybe they, they would get worried and start getting like dark water where ghost girl hair is coming out in water. Uh, uh, don't watch. I don't know why I wanted to watch that movie. I knew it was coming. Like they turn on the water. Uh, I'm gagging already. I don't like hair in my mouth. Um, They turn on the water and it's coming out of the tap and it comes out and it, there's hair in it. Uh, what are you talking about? The movie Dark Water, which the same director of oh. this directed that. It's a fantastic movie besides like the three times that happens. Ugh. Ugh. I'm not like I'm truly gagging, guys. I'm not playing that up. I think 
uh, <laughs> the easiest way to ruin a meal for me is, oh, there's a hair in it. Oh, and it's not even your hair and it's like embedded in the food and you can tell it's like someone else's. I went to this place. I think it's, uh, man. It's downtown Chicago, and it's way before I ever moved here. It's when I would come with friends who would just want to be downtown. And if you come to Chicago, don't do that. You want to go see the outer areas, get out of the loop to really be in the loop of Chicago. They would just want to be down there. And there was this place called like Over Easy Egg Drop, something like that, where I, I'm eating my meal. Hell yeah. Um, or no, no I, I get a chocolate milk. It comes to me. Everyone has their food. I get the chocolate milk. And right on top is like a pube looking hair. And I'm like, uh, oh. hey, can you put this back? So already I'm a little uneasy, but I eat my meal. It's awesome. My friend Ashley, she says, hey, do you want my pancakes, James? I'm like, awesome. I eat the pancakes. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Get down to that last bite pick up the pancake and right underneath is this big long hair and I'm like no no and my friends laughed that oh it was the same friends who laughed at me when I was throwing up at country <laughs> dairy maybe they were just bad luck they I, maybe it was their hair oh damn I, I would much rather that than forcing them to go to church and get an exorcism because they're bad luck hmm <laughs> Uh, also, do you want to know what would smell real bad, not just a well? What? Going like, it's it'll be okay, ma'am. Like, p petting someone's hair to be like, it's fine, it's fine. And then just their skin rips off from their skull, and then their eyeballs have become just goo, and it starts pouring out. Yeah, she got all necromantic with it, because then she's, like, holding it close to her mm -hmm. face. I'm like, you're going to kiss it, aren't you? No. She didn't, but. <laughs> she's going to make her zip her up. <laughs> and then Sadako says, uh, no, thank you. I'm good. I'd much rather be dead. <laughs> uh, also, like this girl clearly has stock in scotch high standard blank VHS tapes because she's like, hey, copy my tape and then you'll be fine. No, she's just trying. It's s vertical integration. You mm -hmm. create the problem. That your product can solve, so then it keeps going around. It keeps going around. It's fucked up. Problem solved. Well, also, like, problem created. But also, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, one thing I do like that Spiral did, so when Spiral showed flashbacks to the first movie, they would just refilm them. Because since they were oh. being they were being filmed at the same time and in completely different cinematography and, like, color gradings so in this one when a creepy girl comes out of your screen freak out run out of the room whereas yeah. so like ryuji is is not doing that in this ring movie he's just like you could say froze with fear but in spiral the retelling of that he freaks the fuck out and starts running away but then like trips and falls it's more slashery than ghost girl i love this movie it's a 10 out of 10 guys absolutely oh, that's all my notes oh good did you have any uh, last thoughts i was gonna stop the movie at one point i think it was right after you know they they broke the curse and we're all happy. And I'm like, wait, I'm just going to let it ride out. And I'm glad I didn't because I would have saw that there's still like 10 minutes left and mm -hmm. there's something going to happen. And then this bitch came out of the TV. Yeah. Which is crazy because I feel like that happened so many times in the American one, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That was like the main thing. And in um, Scary Movie 3. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, Cindy, the TV's leaking. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's it. We both say uh, it gets all the stars it can get. Yes, and then some. Mm -hmm. I would highly recommend Ring 2, Ring Zero, Birthday. I think you should watch them, all of them, Presley. Oh, totally. And Scary Movie 3. Yes, go watch Scary Movie 3. And maybe you want to know, watch Epic Movie while you're at it as well. Please don't ever do that. <laughs> watch Superhero. Watch Ew. Superhero Movie while you're at it as well. Uh, never. 
And I know there was one other that I can't think of. Epic movie? I said epic movie. Oh. That's you the one you said. Super. S- you said super movie. No, I said epic movie, and that's the first one you reacted to. Oh, fuck. I'm tired. I don't know. There was also, or maybe epic movie is the one with Allison Hannigan, right? Yes. Okay, There's all right. There's disaster movie. All right, check out disaster movie, guys. And vampires suck. Though now we're getting into offshoots of this parody craze that was going on that was and not all of quality. Horrible. Yeah. Superhero movie and epic movie. I think epic movie is one of those DVD menus that I've seen many times because I was making out with someone while it was playing. Oh, that movie would just kill the mood. A movie a movie that should have killed the mood was Freddy Got Fingered, but that one just kept <laughs> looping. Ugh. Love that movie. It's so good. That's a 10 out of 10 movie. I don't think I've ever seen it, if Dude, I'm being honest. You get a little stone, not two stone, just a little stone, then watch the movie. Okay, I'll I'll do my best. But speaking of watching movies, you ready for Bucket Stein? Yes. Bring him out. It's hard to yell with those f- fat bolts in near his mouth. He's a baby. All right. A move. So like Whispering Corridors, if we get that right after this, that'd be pretty apropos because that's a South Korean movie that also really fueled this uprising of Asian horror at the time. Uh, if we get Phantom of the Opera, Nicole will be on the next episode. And then... um. If we get the Eternal, I'm, I'm probably going to have to do some audio video fuckery to get a decent looking one of that. <laughs> All right. So what? Uh, oh, t- you tell me when to stop. OK, you've been doing it this whole time, right? Yeah. You're just, OK, <laughs> stop. OK. God damn it. I, I might have to do some audio visual fuckery because we're doing the, I believe, four made for TV movie starring Christopher Walken as, I think, a warlock. We are doing The Eternal. Oh, my God. Cool. (laughs) Yeah, guys. Hell, yeah. Still not. It's going to be insane if our last movie is Bride of Chucky. I know. I was thinking we're going to have some bangers because we have Strangeland left to do as well. Yep. I'm excited. And then we have Phantom of the Opera, Whispering Corridor 2, Full Moon Feature Movies, Bride of Chucky, Strangeland, and then our listener pick. So, hey, guys, if you're listening to this, get more listeners so we can have a real poll going when that comes around. (laughs) Instead of one of our friends. (laughs) Yeah, saying, like, I want this movie. And then it's just like, well, one, two, zero. You got anything to plug? My husband, show Horror Corridor, he does a lot with, um, I totally... Blanking on the name. Look at your microphone in the camera. It's it's on the microphone, the sticker. Oh, I'm a fucking... <laughs> I'm awful. <laughs> horror, horror Crunk. Horror Crunk Entertainment, which I'm, I'm on now, guys. I know. Have I been there since March of last year? You better believe it. I'm excited. Got a new single out, the remix of Catastrophic, which coincides with the first album that I'm putting out, which is the Horror Crunk Entertainment remix album, where I'm taking tracks from the roster that we have, and I remixed them to new production, new beats. It's sounding good. That's coming out February 10th, wherever music is found, so be on the lookout for that. Go to MLMPod.com for information about my other podcasts, such as Formulaic. We just wrote an episode in one hour. I don't know how we did it. It was the easiest script to write because, baby, do I love the show. Maybe that's why. Of Step by Step, that was our newest episode. And uh, check out all the other stuff. It's real good. Time snacks, baby. And head over to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod, where for $5 a month, you get exclusive content every single Friday. But if you want to be generous and want a little bit more, you get monthly content on the $10 tier as well as, um, oh, if you want to hear our thoughts on the aforementioned killing tree from earlier, uh, Lil Corey and Shane came over. We made an entire day out of it. It was real fun discussing that on straight to Patreon. 
but you'll also get shout outs on every single free feed podcast. So let's begin with those starting with Steve F, Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour, Alex Z, The Waz, Orion, he's a rapper, Defo, D hyphen F O, who's got a new track coming out? Be on the lookout for that. Kayla, AK Two Grapes, Jordan B, The Chaos Witch, My Bickle, Brother in Common Law, Joshua, Jakeis, Steve Barnes of Sweet Child of Time, which is coming back as well. I'm a co host on that. Check him out. The womb in which I emerged and then straight from that womb said, hey, you want to zip me up? It's my mom. <laughs> Corey's BFF and roommate Shade and new $10 patron, my good friend Chris, that fed fetter. I've been James. I'm still Presley. And this has been the, the height, height of horror. horror. Woo! Yay. Thanks for listening. See you guys. Bye. Oh, yeah.